but I think all of us kind of picked our job off the floor after the first time working with Taraji and had us kind of rethink. Uh, we're like, okay, we're going in that direction. She's going to lead us. Paw Patrol, the mighty movie. It's out. It's in theaters. It's uh, it's now on, on digital. Uh, moms and dads can go and with a click of a button, have it right there uh, on the TV for their for their kids, for their families. Um Super fun. Uh, I'm I am a an elder millennial dad. So uh, my 11 year old, she's almost 11, was Chase for Halloween a few years ago, uh, <laughs> handful of years ago. So you know, I uh, Paw Patrol's uh, uh, something that's been in in my world for a while. I know for a lot of other parents like myself. Um, when it comes to the new movie, Laura, I want to ask you: Is there anything about Paw Patrol specifically that parents need to know? Do they need to go back and watch all the seasons? Do we need to see the first movie or can you just jump right in and have fun with it? I think as a parent, you can just jump in. because <laughs> It's just like, I think it's really special to be able to take your preschooler to a movie, which is kind of unusual. There's not a lot for little ones to go to. So that's really always fun. And I think the kids will carry you through because there's no way that a kid doesn't really know about Paw Patrol. Like, even if they're not getting that much TV time, you know, your social collateral at school, I feel like you know this brand and you have a sense of the characters. They've been, you know, we're now in our 10th season. So there's a lot of awareness and affinity for for this brand. Yeah. 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 You're absolutely right. I was in uh, uh, the Halloween store the other night with my daughter and there was a uh, Chase uh, pumpkin uh, set up where you could like yeah. put and, and make a pumpkin chase. And I was like, wow, that is I mean, that's something I guess I wouldn't have thought of. That's pretty cool. Um, that's endless. Right? Isn't that neat? Um, yeah. Now, going from, from the first movie to the new movie, did you have any... Um, I think a lot of people want to ask about challenges, you know, but I want to know, like, what were you most excited about getting to do with the Mighty movie that maybe you, got, you didn't get to do the first time around? I think one of the amazing things about Paw Patrol, and this goes through the series as well as into the movies, is that... Uh, in, you know, the first one is in a base level Paw Patrol, normal world. The Mighty movie is a superhero movie. And in the series, they do the same kind of thing where they've got, there's a dinosaur one, there's a, like a Mission Impossible kind of thing going. And I think as a filmmaker, it's really fun to get to play in those different genres and the, with the different expectations. So it feels like something entirely fresh. Uh, every time, every time out. And that was certainly the case. Never made a superhero movie before. So that's something I've always wanted to do and, and, and got a chance to with the mighty movie. So that was, that was amazing. That's cool. I, I, for me, it, it was interesting. You know, you talk about the superheroes and, 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 and all that and how the, the pups acquire their powers. And for me, it felt a lot more like power rangers or like the planeteers from captain planet rather than like the avengers or justice league and and which is kind of what goes into my next question i'll, I'll lend this to you laura is the movie i think does a really good job of like sending that message of you don't have to be born with some specific something about yourself with some specific power or whatever you have everything available to you you can acquire what you need to help your community and I picked up on that and was curious if that was a message that was sort of intentional. Yeah, I mean, we always, you know, when we're when we're crafting the stories, well, really, it's Cal and Bob who are crafting the stories and kind of I'm alongside them. It's, you know, we're always trying to pinpoint what the kind of takeaway is for a kid, you know, what is really relatable to a to a child who's watching, but is compelling enough to kind of really build a story on. And I think, you know, even the smallest pup can make the biggest difference is something that really resonates with kids because they're always feeling, you know, they all feel little, you know, yeah. in this big world. And to have agency is something that's like, you know, great wish fulfillment for a little kid. So it felt so right with with for Sky because she is the smallest pup. And it just um, it just felt like it landed. Right, Cal? It was just kind of I, I mean, just to, to even build on that, that idea of the, the smallest pup, even the adults can go. They live in a world of like, well, what difference can I make by myself? What can one person do? And I think so to Laura's point is like trying to find a theme that's universal enough that it can speak to everybody in the audience. Yeah, absolutely. 
Yeah, you know, and, and it's interesting. I, I think about playing when I was a kid and the characters that I would imagine myself as or, or remembering my kids playing as, as you know, Chase and Ryder and all of that. And and the way that the, the you get this empowerment from seeing that on on your screen, from seeing that acted out and seeing, you know, those characters do their adventures and all that. And it does give you a, a confidence, you know, uh, to like, Hey, maybe I could also take on the world. Yeah. <laughs> it's fun. I'm, glad it worked for, I'm glad it worked for you. <laughs> I, I think in in both movies too, we we intentionally tried to uh, to give our main characters a struggle because mm -hmm. we think that's real to kids in in the real world and and to to adults too. And so to not just have them be unstoppable out of the gate, but for them to rise over their insecurities or any of those things to see that you can fight through difficulty and end up triumphant in the end. So that's, that's certainly something we're always focused on. That's awesome. Were there any, I guess to shift gears a little bit, were there, were there any, I mean, you've incredible cast, some amazing people lend their voices to the movie, but I'm curious if either of you, if there was anyone in particular that you were very excited about joining the cast or, or anyone that was specifically enthusiastic about being their role, about being part of it. Oh my gosh, that's such a hard question to ask. We feel so lucky. Go ahead, Kyle. I'm so lucky with everybody. The <laughs> one that I think knocked our socks off in a surprising way right out of the gate was Taraji P. Henson as okay. V. She came in ready to try absolutely anything for the character. And it actually caused us to go back and rewrite when we saw what was working and what she was great at we immediately went back and said okay that's the voice we gotta we gotta restructure some of this to really let her um go wild and and so uh, like laura said all the cast was amazing but i think all of us kind of picked our job off the floor after the first time working with taraji and had us kind of rethink uh we're like okay we're going in that direction she's gonna lead us and so that that was that was awesome yeah, because she's been on our list for a while. Like we have lists running for the first movie, the second. And it was just, it was kind of, it just felt so, she felt, just felt perfect for it. And you always kind of hope that it's going to work out and then you kind of cross your fingers. But when someone comes in and they just blow it away and they become, they are the character, it, it's it's a pretty remarkable experience. I think That's too, with, with such a, such a, um, you know, respected actress, for yeah. somebody to come in and have zero she didn't hold anything back and that's always such a such a wonderful thing that doesn't always happen so yeah it was great and i think we're also blown away by how much yeah people give when they come into the room and they're so you know it's so amazing all everyone's everybody was so authentic and really gave it them all and there was no kind of pretense as you would no, maybe expect great. from celebrity it was just it was really a great experience to work with, the, with this um this cast that's cool. That's cool. That's refreshing for to hear. I mean, that's really awesome. Uh, before I let you guys go, I have one last kind of, uh, I guess, silly question. You know, we talked about costumes earlier and how that's a big thing. The 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 Paw Patrol costumes, they're out and about on Halloween. OK, and uh, so people are seeing this after, but we're talking on Halloween. And I'm curious, whenever you get the knock or the ring at the doorbell. And you open, you hear the trick or treat and and you see a group of kids. But there's that one kid that's dressed like Paw Patrol. You ever give them like maybe an extra candy or two? Maybe a, maybe a, a king size bar. Get, like <laughs> triple, triple dunk, triple dunk in the, in the bowl. They might even get a high five on the on the way back. <laughs> sure. Definitely. There, well, was one, sure. there was one Halloween where I got to give away actually little figures when my kids were small. I was literally the most popular person on the block, maybe in the neighborhood. That's the coolest. Yeah. I, I mean, I would have changed costumes and come back to a house like that. Yeah. <laughs> Cal, Laura, it was really awesome to meet you guys. I appreciate you chatting about Paw Patrol today. Uh, it's it's streaming now uh, on digital. People can go pick it up. Parents can go uh, watch it with their kids. Thank you guys again. <laughs>